Some of those license plates are really tricky, especially for third graders. Glad you did so well. Okay, I'm going to continue under the license plates on page 90 in my book. Wait a second, Winston said. His dreamlike examination of passing license plates was interrupted by a random thought that had dropped from nowhere, demanding attention and pushing aside everything else. Wait a second, he said again, trying to lasso that thought, tie it down, and figure out the words to express it. Everybody waited, and Mal said, Yes? Winston said slowly, The Brookfield brains were the first to solve the planetarium puzzle, right? That's what they said, Mr. Garvey sniffed. Doesn't make it true. Well, they were the first, one of the first ones anyway. We saw them run out, and there were still a few teams in the theater when we got in there. Mr. Garvey conceded the point with a shrug. All right, fine. Winston felt his way along. They had four good tires when they left the planetarium, right? They drove to the deli. They bought some drinks or whatever. While they were inside, someone came along and did to them what, what he'd already done to us. Gave them a back tire wedgie, said Mal. Yeah, he gave them a... Winston stopped, completely derailed. He looked at Mal. Is that really what a bottle under the tire is called? Oh, I just made it up, said Mal. Winston stared at his friend for a moment, then continued. I thought the cheater was a kid on one of the other teams, that he was cheating without anyone on his team knowing it. Jake said, that's what I thought too, it's what I still think. But it can't be, Winston said. The entire team is cheating together. He paused to give his next statement maximum impact. Including the teacher. Wait a minute, Mr. Garvey said, you don't know that. Jake turned around in his seat. I don't get it either. How hard is it to pop a bottle under somebody's tire or move a couple of signs? A kid could do that. Winston said, whoever gave the Brookfield team a flat tire had to follow them to the deli first. Did a kid drive the car? They thought about that. And Mr. Garvey said, come on, Winston. I know there's a lot of money at stake, but a school teacher isn't going to resort to cheating. Jake gave a snort of laughter. Mr. Garvey turned and gave him a curious look. What's that supposed to mean? He asked. Winston recognized a wisp of threat to that voice. Jake noticed, noticed it too. Nothing. And he looked out the window. Mr. Garvey persisted. Is there something you want to say, Jake? For a moment, Winston thought Jake was going to keep looking out the window, saying nothing. But, he said... What you did to the girls' team was cheating, leaving them in the wrong place. It was nothing of the sort, Mr. Garvey said. It wasn't a very nice thing to do, perhaps, but it was hardly cheating. All these teams are very competitive. We're looking for a way to get an edge on our opponents. He concentrated on the road long enough to change lanes. Do you think if the girls' teacher had discovered the real puzzle location, while we were standing in the hallway, that she would have come back and told us the right place to go? Yeah, Jake said simply. We all said we would look for the puzzle together. Mr. Garvey shook his head. Don't believe it, Jake. Don't you believe it. They would have left, left us there, same as we did to them. Jake turned and looked out the window again. No point arguing. Jake thought Mr. Mark Garvey was wrong, and Mr. Garvey thought Jake was wrong, and neither one of them is going to convince the other. Well, that said, Mr. Garvey announced, I have a hard time believing a teacher would sink so low as to give somebody a flat tire. That's cheating. I still think it's one kid, not the entire team, and certainly not a teacher. How could, how could a kid follow Brookfield to the deli without a teacher's help, said Winston. Who said anybody followed them to the deli? Mr. Garvey said. It doesn't have to be that complicated. Another team decides to go to that same deli and the cheater's on that team. He sees the Brookfield's car, so decides to give it. He almost said a back tire wedgie, but caught himself at the last moment. A flat tire. The rest of the team is in the deli. No one sees him do it. 
This kid's got a lucky streak a mile wide, but it's still just a kid playing nasty tricks trying to get ahead, Mel said. So that would put the cheater on Brendan Root's team, wouldn't it? What? Why? said Winston. They left the planetarium a minute after Brookville, didn't they? If anybody is going to follow Brookville to the deli, it's them. Yeah, said Jake. But we already decided that Brendan's team can't be the cheater's team. We did? How did we figure that out? Brendan's team was at the potato chip factory when we got there. The person who gave us the flat arrived after us. Oh, said Mal. He stared up at the ceiling of the car, trying to work it all out. Then I have no idea. All I know is this is giving me a headache. We are probably wrong about everything, said Winston. As long as we're not wrong about these puzzles, said Mr. Garvey, that's all I care about. Mr. Garvey had predicted that Adventureland would be jam-packed. He was wrong. It was several light years beyond jam-packed. Every parking spot was taken. Half dozen harried park employees were waving cars to an adjoining grassy field. Winston and his team emerged from the car and looked off to where the rides of Adventureland swirled and twirled. They were still incredibly far away. All right, let's hustle, said Mr. Garvey, and he began a quick jog toward the entrance. The boys followed. Nobody else said anything about exercise, Mal groused. He was already falling behind. I'll buy you all some nice cold sodas when we get there. Just keep moving, said Mr. Garvey. Winston kept moving. He hoped they found this puzzle quickly, that the signs were big, and that they saw them right away. Adventureland was a large park. It had, if they had to search the whole place from front to back for a picture of a smiling potato chip guy, they could be here a long, long time. Hey, look there, said Jake, pointing. Brendan Root and his team were standing in the big grassy field, gazing around, looking lost and confused. Winston understood. They were searching for their car, but they were leaving Adventureland. Had they already solved that puzzle? Winston stopped running. Mr. Garvey, could I talk to them for a second? What? Why? Mr. Garvey was irritated. I want to know if they had a flat tire. Mr. Garvey stopped running, too. A thoughtful expression crossed his face. He nodded, go ahead, but make it fast. We'll meet you right by that little shack up front where you buy the tickets. The rest of the team continued to the park entrance. Winston veered toward Brendan. He picked up the pace a little. He didn't want them to find their car just as he was getting close. Brendan saw him coming and waved, hey, Winston. He was happy to see his supposed rival. Delighted, in fact, his two other teammates Teammates and their teacher all looked up. None of them looked as happy about Winston's visit to Brendan. Hey, Brendan, Winston said, smiling. It was hard not to be caught up in Brendan's enthusiasm. He was like a puzzle-loving puppy. Hey, how's the game going for you? Great. This puzzle was fun, wasn't it? Well, we actually haven't gotten there yet, Brendan. Really? Brendan looked shocked. Yeah, we've had a couple problems. Brendan's teacher said, Where's your team, young man? The two other kids on the team were gazing at him suspiciously. Winston guessed that Brendan's teammates were brothers. They had the same coal black hair and thick eyebrows. Don't tell him anything, Brendan, said Brother One. Yeah, keep your mouth shut, said Brother Two. Brendan's eyes went wide and innocent. I won't, I won't. I thought he would have solved it already. Mr. Lester, this is Winston Breen. This was said with a sweeping arm gesture of a circus ringmaster introducing the evening's top act, and Winston felt himself blush. The teacher, Mr. Lester, smiled and nodded. Ah, Winston Breen. Brendan's told us a lot about you. How is your team doing? We've solved two pu puzzles so far, Winston said, and saw how Brendan's teammates smiled at each other. Well, sure, they were a full puzzle ahead. Well, Lince, listen, Winston continued. A few teams think that somebody might be cheating. Cheating? Mr. Lester looked amazed. Yeah, 
Have you had any unexpected problems? A couple teams got flat tires. The members of Brendan team, Brendan's team all looked at each other, shrugging. Mr. Lester said, No, I'd say, we'd ha I'd say we've had pretty smooth sailing. You know, people do get flat tires now and again. I ran over some broken glass myself a couple months ago. Had to wait two hours for a tow truck. It didn't mean anybody was out to get me. I'd say it's a pretty big jump to say a cheater's afoot. Well, there's more. And Winston told them about how the signs in the planetarium had grown legs and walked away. Mr. Lester looked a little more thoughtful. Suspicious, I grant you. We'll keep our eyes open, I promise. But now we really need to find our car in this mess of a parking lot so we can move on to the next puzzle, if you'll excuse us. He smiled poli politely, but made a shooing gesture. We'll see you later back at the potato chip company. He and his boys walked slowly off, looking for their car. Brent Brendan lagged behind the others. He turned back to Winston and said, Do you really think somebody gave you a flat tire on purpose? Mm -hmm. That stinks. Brendan looked quite devastated. I wanted this thing to be you and me going head to head. You know? Well, maybe we'll catch up. I... Brendan stopped and glanced behind. Mr. Lester and the brothers didn't know that Brendan wasn't with them. He stepped closer to Winston and said in a low but excited voice, I could tell you the answer to this puzzle, and then we would be tied up again. Winston was alarmed. No, don't. You'd get in trouble. We both would. Well, if you didn't get the flat tire, I know we'd be neck and neck racing to the finish line. Two puzzle lovers. Who will come out on, who will come out on top? Brendan's arms were swinging wide again. I, uh, we can't do that. Maybe we'll just catch up anyway. Brendan paused as if he might just blurt out the answer. Consequence or no. But then he crumpled and said, okay, I could give you a hint. Brendan, let's go. Mr. Lester yelled, as if sensing that Brendan was about to help the enemy. No hints, Winston said firmly. I think they found your car, and I better get back to my team. All right, Brendan nodded. It was almost funny how morose Brendan looked, even though his team was probably winning. He slunk back over to his teacher. Winston dashed off to rejoin his team. Mr. Garvey had allowed him to go, of course, but would probably still snap at him for taking too long. Brendan was going to tell him the answer to this puzzle. Incredible! Incredibly stupid. If he'd allowed Brendan to spill the beans, it would have been a disaster. What would he have said to his team? Guess what? Brendan and I cheated, so we're all set. We could move on to the next puzzle. His friends would have been shocked beyond belief. And how would Mr. Garvey react? The math teacher had shown he was willing to bend the rules, but even he would consider this to be way over the line, right? Winston had to admit that he really wasn't sure about that. Either Mr. Garvey would slap Winston on the back to congratulate him, or would tell him, yell at him until he had a seizure. Winston didn't know which possibility he found more unsettling. All in all, Winston had to admit he felt a small grain of temptation to let Brandon open his mouth. It'd be nice to spring from the back of the pack to first place. Winston was enjoying the puzzle so far, but he had no confidence that they could win this. Well, there you are, Mr. Garvey said as Winston approached. I didn't know you were planning to have a lunch with those guys. We watched two teams walk by while we were standing here. Going in or going out? Going out. They solved it. They solved it and they found it and solved it. And we're just standing here. Now let's go. Mr. Garvey started walking. Who was it? Winston asked Val and Jake. Who did you guys see? Well, one of the teams had that kid on it. What was his name? John? You know, the one who said he was going to kick our butts? Oh, him. I guess he is kicking our butts, Mel said. He waved to us as he passed and said, Having fun? You know, the way he said it was, he really meant was, Having fun, you losers? 
He might as well have said, dang it, stuck out his tongue. I don't know if we're going to win this, but I sure hope we beat him. Well, who was the other team? Winston asked. The Marin School, said Mr. Garvey. One of the private schools, smart kids, and they probably sent their smartest here today. And he shook his head. Hey, said Mal, we're smart. Yeah, Mr. Garvey said. Show me less talking, more walking. They shouldered their way through the crowd, looking for anything that might be a puzzle. Winston was feeling particularly small and childlike, trying to make us through grown-ups, sorry, through groups of adults with strollers and gangs of high school kids enjoying their first day of summer. It was uncomfortably crowded. Stupid, said Mr. Garvey. Stupid to put a puzzle here on a day like this. It's not just thinking, how are we supposed to find it? Other teams did, said Jake. They found a small island of calm near some picnic tables and stopped to regroup. All right, where are we going? I don't know, said Winston. This place is huge. Does that computer give any information? Jake said, I don't think so, but I'll look. He turned on the computer, which, which promptly gave the opening. He poked at the buttons and said, nope, it just says Adventureland. Once we're here, we're on our own. Great, Mr. Garvey said, disgusted. Jake kept pushing buttons while saying, It would be nice if this thing told you who was in the lead. There was a moment's pause, and, they, and then Jake said, Oh my gosh, it does! It does what? It tells you who's winning the contest. What? Let me see, Winston said. Jake handed him the computer. The status button had brought up a simple chart showing all their school names and which puzzles they had solved. Let's see, this is what the chart looks like. There it is, all right, Winston said. East West Meadow, Kennedy, and Marin School solved this, and everyone else must be here or on their way. Mr. Garvey looked over their shoulders. We know Lincoln's here already. They left the farm a couple minutes before we did. Lincoln, said Mal. Which one is that? Jake said. That's Mr. Garvey's arch enemy. He's not my enemy, Mr. Garvey insisted. But then he hesitated and added, I just want to beat his pants off for once, okay? Winston said, well, they still must be here, or may so maybe we could catch up. Mr. Garvey took the computer from Winston's hand and shut it off. We have to start moving faster. Where's that puzzle? They looked around. They were standing near some food carts with long lines snaking every which way. To the right were the bumper cars. Winston could see the merry chaos of kids banging into each other. Up ahead was the park's beautiful full-size carousel. Beyond that, the Ferris wheel. As a ride, the Ferris wheel was boring. You went up slowly, you came back down slowly. Big deal. But today, however, it caught his eye. What's that? Winston asked, squinting to bring it in focus. They all turned to see. The wheel was stopped at the moment so the people could get on or off. From here, they could see only the cars at the top. Usually the cars were painted bright yellow. The ride was actually called the Sun Wheel. Now, there was a black painting on each car. From here, it looked like someone had painted a giant shoe on the topmost car. A shoe? Graffiti? Jake asked. I don't think so, said Mr. Garvey, hope dawning in his voice. Let's go see. They elbowed elbowed and shouldered their way through the crowd. Mal amused himself with the endless harangue of, excuse me, pardon me, coming through, excuse me, until Mr. Garvey told him to keep quiet already. They arrived at the sun wheel, and sure enough, signs had been placed all around, inviting visitors to try Simon's new potato squares. This was the right place. Each car of the wheel had been painted with a different random icon, was that supposed to be a rhinoceros? An ice cream cone? And yes, that was a shoe painted on one of the cars. 
to see if it's in your booklet. Oh, okay. while I'm reading, you might want to take out your booklet and look at the Ferris wheel, page 102. Whatever I thought we were going to find here, it certainly wasn't this, said Jake. I'm trying to imagine the conversation Dimitri Simon had with the amusement park people, said Mel. I'd like to paint a bunch of pictures on your Ferris wheel. I'm sorry, sir, you can't do that. What if I gave you this big pot of money? Oh, that changes everything. So what are we supposed to do, Mr. Garvey said. I don't know, said Jake. Winston was suddenly aware of being stared at. He looked at his left and he saw the team from Lincoln Junior High, Rod Denham and his three frowning kids. For a change, Mr. Denham wasn't wearing that superior smirk. Mr. Garvey and his rival made eye contact, waved to each other in a shaky display of sportsmanship. Mr. Denham then moved his team a few feet further away. Mr. Garvey, still staring at them, said, they were there were five or ten minutes they were five or ten minutes ahead of us. If they're still here, they must be stuck. This is our chance to pass them. Let's not blow it. Well, said Jake, what are we supposed to do? Who has some paper? Let's write down what those things are. Mr. Garvey had a small notebook he'd been using all day. He took out a pen and said, Okay, toss them out to me. Start at noon. At noon, Mal said. It's already 12.30. Mr. Garvey stared at Mal in disbelief, then said slowly, Pretend the Ferris wheel's a giant clock. Give me the pictures at the 12 o'clock position. Oh, Winston said. Rhinoceros. There are a bunch of faces. A boat. Or maybe it's supposed to be a canoe. Then that's a... A garbage can, Jake said. Yeah, Winston said. Then a house... The wheel was turning now, carrying new passengers. After that, we've got a stage or a theater or something. Then a trumpet. That's not a trumpet, said Mal. A trumpet has a lot of, what you call them, a valves. That's a bugle. Okay, a bugle. Then a safe, an ice cream cone. Hold on, Mr. Garvey said, writing. Okay, now what? A bunch of hats, a shoe, fence. The last one is a gate, Jake said. Yeah, I think Jake's right, a gate. Mr. Garvey crossed something out and finished writing. He clicked the pen closed, looked at his boys, and announced, I have no idea what this is. Me neither, said Winston. Do all these things have something in common, Mal asked. Yeah, said Jake, they're made up of letters from the alphabet. The wheel, they stared at the wheel, wide-eyed and increasingly baffled. Winston tried pairing the images up. The shoe was next to the hats, and both were kinds of clothing. That seemed promising, except why one shoe and three hats? Winston guessed that maybe the house and the stage could be paired up. They were both kinds of buildings. Oh, but that didn't seem right. The whole line of thought seemed less than promising. Even if it was right, what then? Winston couldn't pair up any of the remaining pictures. A gate and a rhinoceros? Faces and a canoe? Ugh, it felt hopeless. Mal said, I guess the answer is going to be a 12-letter word. What? Why? He shrugged. I don't know. There are 12 objects, so maybe we have to take a letter from each one to spell something out. How? Winston asked. Beats me, I'm just throwing stuff out there. Winston sighed. Oh, this was the frustrating part. Waiting for an idea to come from some magical place within in the brain. Right now, all he could think to do was to stare at the wheel. The girls showed up a few minutes later. Bethany first. She was staring at the Ferris wheel, unaware she had come to a stop next to Winston, who wondered whether or not he should say something. Before he could decide, Bethany turned and saw him. She stared up to see Mal and Jake as well. Winston might have said something at that point, though heaven knew what, but Bethany abruptly turned her back and walked away.
Her friends, Elvie and Giselle, came up right then, saw Bethany marching away, and ran to catch up. Last to arrive was their teacher, Miss Norris. She came running up, frazzled as ever, out of breath. <gasps> Girls, she said between pants, it's very crowded here. I don't want to lose you. Oh, we said we were going, Bethany called back, disappearing from view from around the side of the ride. Miss Norris was definitely not in charge of the team. Certainly not in the same whip-cracking way that Mr. Garvey was. Mr. Garvey caught Winston staring and gave him a light shake as if to literally rattle Bethany and the girls out of his head. Winston, unabashed, turned back to the Ferris wheel. Now how could they get an answer word out of this bunch of pictures? Does this park have a stage? Mal asked. I think it does, Winston said. Why? Well, there's a picture of a stage. Maybe it's a clue that we should go there. There's a picture of a rhinoceros, too. You think a park, the park has one of those, Jake said. A few minutes later, Mr. Garvey said, A lot of teams here now. At least we're back in the thick of it. He kept looking over at Rod Dedham's team to see how they were faring. Lincoln Junior High looked stuck, which would have been something to celebrate, except that Winston and his team weren't doing well either. There were several teams gazing at the Ferris wheel, mouths slightly agape, unable to make sense of what they were seeing. They all looked like victims of the same wizard's hypnotism spell. Maybe there's more to the puzzle somewhere, Mal said. Where? asked their teacher. The other side of the wheel, maybe. There could be pictures on both sides. Mr. Garvey looked at Mal with surprise. You might be right. Go and see. Can I go too? Jake asked quickly. And me, said Winston. The three of them looked up at their teacher with pleading eyes. They may well have said, we really need to get away from you for a few minutes. Mr. Garvey got the message and agreed. The boys tried not to appear too giddy as they left Mr. Garvey behind, but they all felt some relief as they walked away. I'm glad I'm only average at math, Jake said. I'll never have him as a teacher. He just wants to beat his rivals, Mal said. You should hear some of the things you say before your baseball team plays Maplewood. That's different, Jake said. Hmm, you say so, Mal said, shrugging. Speaking of the rival team, the three walked past Rod Dedham and the trio from Lincoln. They stopped talking as Winston and his friends drew close and watched them pass, pass with expressions of cool hostility, as if Winston was trying to eavesdrop or something. Everybody's so friendly around here, Mal said to the Lincoln kids, or so the Lincoln kids could hear. I'm definitely inviting those guys to my next birthday party. The other side of the Ferris wheel looked no different. Each picture had been painted on both sides of its car. So that was a bust. They had learned nothing new. They stopped nonetheless and looked up at the Ferris wheel from this new vantage point. Any idea what it is? Mal asked. Mm -mm, Winston said, not a one. Three teams solved it already, Jake said. How hard could it be? Winston didn't reply. Every puzzle was hard when you didn't know the answer. Every puzzle was easy when you knew what to do. Come on, let's circle back, he said. They walked slowly, not saying anything. Winston stared at the pavement, the 12 pictures from the sun wheel spin spinning around in his mind. He felt like he was stumbling his way through a dark room, looking for a light switch that might not even be there. He thought of Brendan Root, who had solved this thing easily enough. This puzzle was fun, wasn't it? Brendan had said in the parking lot. What had Brendan seen in these 12 pictures? that Winston was missing. He was startled when Jake stopped his progress with a hand to the chest. Look, he said, and Winston looked up. Twenty yards ahead was the girls' team, Bethany and her teammates, all in that same state of hypnosis, staring up at the wheel. The boys looked at each other, having a silent conversation 
about whether to continue forward or turn around like scared kittens. Come on, man, Jake said, deciding for all of them. They were only a few steps closer when Bethany glanced over and saw them. She nudged Giselle, who in turn nudged Elvie. Winston looked at his friends as if to ask, Should we keep going? Bethany had an expression on her face, like she couldn't wait for the confrontation they were about to have. But Jake never paused. The cheaters are here, announced Bethany. Hide your belongings. Winston turned red. He didn't know what to say. He knew the girls would feel tricked, but it was awful to be accused of outright cheating. Jake didn't like it either. We didn't cheat, he said. You left us standing in that hallway, said Giselle. We were working together, remember? We were all looking for the puzzle together. Her face went dark with disappointment. Our teacher did that, Jake replied in a calm voice. Winston was more than happy to speak for all of them. He decided not to tell you when we found the puzzle. He's very competitive. I'm sorry, we shouldn't have left you waiting there. The girls looked at him, weighing the sincerity of this apology. The smallest girl, Elvie, said, And what about the bathroom? She crossed her arms while asking this, like a lawyer who knows she's about to make a defendant confess. Winston, though, didn't have the slightest idea what she was talking about. Neither did Mal or Jake. They looked at one another, hoping someone else knew what this question meant. Mal finally said, I admit, sometimes I do have to go to the bathroom. Elvie grimaced. The bathroom back at the farm. That was you, wasn't it? She looked at them. It was a mean trick. Winston was start, starting to experience a detached and dizzy feeling that comes when you have no idea what's going on. Whatever you're talking about, we had nothing to do with it. We're not cheaters, said Mal a bit more ad adamantly. Adamantly, Ugh. somebody else is cheating. They gave us a flat tire. Then they moved the sign at the planetarium so we wouldn't find the puzzle. Whatever you're talking about, the cheater probably did it too. You know, I believe them, Bethany said, sounding surprised with herself. You do? Giselle was shocked. He's right. Someone moved those signs in the planetarium, but it wasn't these guys. They got stuck by that like us. They should have played fair and told us when they found the puzzle. Bethany glanced at the boys one by one as if, as if daring them to argue. But they didn't move those signs in the first place. Somebody's cheating, but it's not them. Who is it then? Elvie asked. Nobody could answer. Winston, Winston asked them about the incident in a bathroom, and the girls finally told the story. Someone on the New Easton team, a girl named Chrissy Huang, had gone into the ladies' restroom at Sutherland Farms. When she tried coming back out, the door wouldn't open. The doorknob turned, but that was all. The door itself wouldn't budge an inch. She pounded on the door until Bethany heard the commotion and went to investigate. The bathroom door had been wedged shut with a small triangular block jammed tightly into the door frame. Bethany couldn't pry it out. After calming Chrissy down, Bethany ran to the young man behind the cash register for help. Soon someone came with a crowbar, and Chrissy, shaken and upset, was freed. Who is this guy? Jake said, asked angrily. And how does he get away with so many nasty tricks? Nobody knew the answer, but they all talked about it. Winston realized something new. The cheater trapped this girl in the bathroom long after the leading teams had left for Adventureland. The cheater couldn't be one of the winning teams. But why go through all this trouble if not to steal the victory from everybody else? It made no sense. Hey, Mal said, looking around. Where is your teacher? Giselle said, oh, right over there. She was pointing to the bench not far away where Miss Norris was sitting. Mal said, well, she's not standing over you, yelling at you to solve the puzzle faster. Would you two like, or would you guys like to trade teachers? 
The girl smiled. No, thanks, Elvie said. As if referring to Mr. Garvey was enough to summon, summon him, the math teacher appeared suddenly from the other side of the Ferris wheel. He saw his boys talking with the girls and called from a distance, Excuse me, if you guys are finished chatting, I'd like to solve this puzzle before nightfall. Can we step back over here, please? Sorry, Winston said after a moment of awkwardness. Um, we have to go, he said to Bethany. I get that. See you later, she said. The boys and girls nodded goodbye, and Winston and his friends caught back up with their teacher. Mal said with a smile, You know, I think Winston's trying to win a different prize today. How did I know you were going to say that, Winston said. Well, not that, but something close. They are kind of cute, aren't they, Winston said. Oh, sorry, Jake said, looking back at them. Hmm, three boys, three girls. You know what that means. Yes, said Mr. Garvey. We're going to lose, so can we focus here, please? The puzzle was still here, revolving slowly in the afternoon sky. Winston still didn't have any idea where to begin. Well, you hope for a harder puzzle. Jake said to Mr. Garvey as they all continued staring. I suppose I did, but I was hoping it would be harder for everybody else, not for us. Well, maybe we need to go on the ride, Matt said. What good is that going to do? Mr. Garvey asked. Nope, just stay here. Mal said, what if there's something in the cars? Or maybe something on the ground that you can only see from the top of the Ferris wheel? We're not getting anywhere standing here. The math teacher grimaced, massaged his forehead, and said, All right, maybe you're right, I don't know. But I don't want all of you going. You're on your own, Mal, all right? I want Winston and Jake to stay here and work with me on these words. Mal nodded and sauntered off to the ride to ride the sun wheel by himself. Winston thought Mal had a pretty good idea. When you're stuck on a puzzle, it's good to try random stuff to see if spark, it sparks any new inspiration. But Winston had to admit he was doubtful that a ride on the Ferris wheel would lead anywhere. Mal shouldered his way into the crush of people waiting to go on the ride. It was a small mob. For some reason, they refused to form an orderly line. There were other teams around the sun wheel, and a few of them noticed Mal. Ron Dunham's team, off to the left, went into an urgent conference and after a few moments sent its own rep to go on the ride. The other teams followed suit. Bethany's team, on the other side of the Ferris wheel, must have noticed somehow, or perhaps they had the same idea on their own. In any event, here came Elvie, the smallest of the three girls. Winston wondered if she was even tall enough for this ride. All right, let's start this again said Mr. Garvey, massaging the wrinkles in his forehead. Pretend we just got here. Look, a whole bunch of pictures on the Ferris wheel. I bet this is a puzzle we're looking for. He slapped both sides of his face in mocking surprise. Jake said, Isn't safe house a word? Sure is. Why? Well, there's a safe and a house. Safe house. Hmm, that makes sense. Winston began looking for other compound words. Maybe that's not a trumpet or a bugle. Maybe it's a horn, and then you could make shoehorn. Mr. Garvey nodded enthusiastically. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. What else? The three kept staring. Winston glanced at Mal and saw him squeezing through the crowd about, about to get on the ride. He wondered if they should call him back. Were they about to solve this? Apparently not. I hate to say this, said Jake, but I don't see anything else. What are you supposed to do with rhinoceros? Hmm. Rhino horn, suggested Winston. We already used horn, though, to make shoehorn. Maybe it's not a rhinoceros, Mr. Garvey said. Then what is it? It could be animal. Mr. Garvey absorbed the doubtful looks from Winston and Jake. All right, I'm just brainstorming here, he said. Winston mentally combined the pictures and continued to get nowhere. Garbage hats? Rhinoceros faces? 
After that promising start, all he could find was nonsense. Mal was being led onto the ride right now. Winston could see him hopping into one of the cars. Elvie stepped into the same car. They seemed to be hitting it off. The sun wheel lurched and began to spin and the two of them were soon swinging their way toward the top. I think we have to try something else, Mr. Garvey handed. Oops, something else, Mr. Garvey said. Me too, Winston said. Can I see that list of words? Mr. Garvey handed it to him. Maybe the pictures weren't important. Once you named them all, Mr. Garvey had written the words down in a list. Winston wondered if he should write them out again this time in a circle. Maybe the pictures were in a particular order for a reason. He took the pencil from the back pocket, sat down with his back against a fence post, his knees almost up to his neck, and he sketched the words. You can do this in your book. Look at the word rhinoceros. Had he spelled it right? This was one of those words that always seemed to have a few extra letters in it, just for fun. How do you spell rhinoceros? He called to Mr. Garvey, but then instantly backtracked and said, never mind. He scratched it out and wrote the word rhino instead. And that was all it took. Ah, he yelled and threw his head backward and hit it against the fence he was leaning against. He tried to jump up, but he wasn't in a position that allowed for jumping. Ah, he cried again. Jake asked, are you in pain or do you have something? Winston stood. He was nearly shaken, shaking with euphoria. I have something, Mr. Garvey said urgently. You solved it? I think so. Look, he held out the paper with the words written in a circle. So you can make sure you put these words on the page with your Ferris wheel. Each word is connected with the word directly opposite it. Connected how? asked Mr. Garvey. Trash hats? What does that mean? Winston shook his head. Figuring out the connection is just part of the puzzle, but I've got it. See if you can look at it and figure something out. 